In this video, I'm going to cover three shoes that I had to retire early. Yes, three shoes that I had to Brett Favre. That's not funny, is it? Not even close. I'll cut it. Shoe number one, the Adidas Ultra Boost uh, DNA something or other, AKA the Ted Cruz. We're gonna have to cut that too, aren't we? It does say here at Midlife Runner, we are a political tracking. The Adidas Ultra Boost DNA. I had to retire the shoe two times over. The first time I retired it was because it's too heavy. I took it out for a couple of runs, five miles, six miles. For a daily trainer, it was just a little too heavy for me. The shoe itself, aesthetically very pleasing. As aesthetically pleasing as the color orange can be. Very comfortable to walk in. I turned it into my daily work shoe. Probably put 100 or 200 miles in that. It looks like a knit upper, it's very stretchy. These laces here are just for optics. You don't even really need them. You can slide in and out. It's very nice. I had to retire it a second time because the smell, it stinks. And for context, this is a pretty big deal because I can't smell anything. This is what I consider a superpower. Like I'm the dad, when my kids were young, the, when they were babies in diapers, I would have the baby's like butt right up to my face, like <sighs> smelling it. Yep, yep, that's shit. I think that's shit. So if I can smell this shoe, then it stinks worse than the Chicago Bears. No one thinks you're funny. Shoe number two, the Bondi 6. Look at that platform. Is a, a behemoth. Behemoth, nice. Uh, not sure that applies. He chonk. He chonky boy. Oh lord, he coming. No one likes you. The Bondi 6 is great for walking. I see a lot of these out in work environments, people walking around in them. That's what I do. It's like a Tempur-Pedic mattress right underneath your foot. There's tons of midsole foam. The outsole is holding up excellent after, I don't know, a couple of years of having this thing. This is the Bondi 6. I think they're probably on the 8 now. The reason I retired it is because when I run in it, it is so big and cavernous. It kind of forces my foot into a weird landing that makes my legs sore, my shins, my ankles. Maybe it's just too heavy and my running form is extremely amateur. Whatever the case, I just walk in it. Worth noting of note, I am not a Max Cushion guy. So maybe it's not the Bondi 6 that disagrees with me, but all Max Cushion shoes, maybe the Fresh Foam more would be more of the same story. I don't know, I do own two pairs of Max Cushion shoes, but they're like the Nike Invincible and the New Balance SC trainer. And those shoes have a lot of energy return, so I feel the bounce and I pick up as I go. Maybe there's the difference there. So it could not be the Bondi. No, no, I'm not hating on the Bondi 6. It could just be all Max Cushion shoes. Shoe number three I no longer have in my possession. It is the Reebok Float Ride Energy 2. Well, you could say the same about three or four because the updates are roughly about the same. It's just a shoe. It's just a shoe. It's a cheap shoe, oftentimes on discount for like 50 bucks, which is why I bought it and it's great for that price, but it's just a shoe. In 2023 and going forward, Reebok is doing some innovation with some zigzag bull And hey, if it makes me go faster, I'm all about that shit. Oh, look, there's the number for HR. Thank you guys for listening to me and my inner critical parent. If you made it this far in the video, you are legally obligated and required to subscribe and to hit the like button. I've got some more videos coming up. The Austin 3M Half Marathon is next week. I'm going to film it. I'm going to splice it with a recap. It's going to be awesome. I have some other running stuff that you can click on here or here, there in the description below. Somewhere I'm going to figure it out in editing. Thanks for watching.